Okay, um, so um, today we want to present uh, something that is very much uh, related to the presentation uh, you've just uh, seen, um, but maybe a little bit more uh, 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 taking the same principles into uh, proving the concept in uh, uh, practice. Um, so, um, uh, uh, what I want to present uh, together with Martin is uh, something that we've both worked on. Um, I, from my position at uh, the Netherlands Institute for Sound and Vision, uh, uh, looking at the use cases for uh, tools that uh, allow you to prove the provenance of uh, web uh, publications. Um, and Martin, uh, uh, as a freelancer, who did the uh, um, desk research for this project to see how it fits in a larger uh, set of technologies that are emerging, of which uh, the C2PA uh, initiative is one of the things that he researched in his uh, desk research, uh, just to give you an idea of our roles in this project. Um, I'll first present the context of this project, then we'll go into two of the use cases that we've proven as part of this research project, uh, and then reflect a little bit on our experience now that the project has ended. Um, so uh, this is uh, the result of a research project that was initiated by uh, Public Spaces, which is an initiative that is looking for uh, uh, alternative technology uh, that not-for-profit organizations can use to build their software ecosystem. Uh, when they are serving uh, uh, the public good. Uh, so think of uh, public broadcast uh, organizations, other media organizations, uh, um, NGOs, organizations like that who want to have a tool set that fits with, uh, a digital tool set that fits with their uh, remit and their missions. Uh, so think of uh, things like it being open, transparent, responsible, uh, user-centric, uh, all values that these organizations want to also uh, portray in their technology stack. Um, and uh, Proof of Provenance is an initiative that falls under that uh, public spaces umbrella uh, that is uh, trying to take steps uh, for uh, particularly media organizations uh, uh, to be able to add their digital uh, expressions uh, with some uh, confidence in a very uh, um, uh, diverse media landscape uh, consisting of uh, media expressions being shared on social media, uh, provenance not being clear, uh, expressions being uh, uh, um, uh, recontextualized, sometimes not uh, represented correctly. Uh, in that reality, uh, media organizations are as you may have experienced, struggling a little bit. Uh, proof of provenance is a very practical uh, approach in exploring what can we do to add some more confidence and uh, um, uh, trustworthiness to uh, uh, official uh, quote-unquote media expressions. Um, in this project, uh, which was really uh, quite practical, uh, really proving this concept uh, uh, in practice. We took uh, existing uh, technology in the Netherlands from an initiative which is called IRMA, uh, I Reveal My Attributes, uh, is what the uh, uh, abbreviation stands for. Um, this is technology that allows uh, individuals or organizations to uh, expose uh, uh, particular attributes uh, that uh, uh, belong to them in a privacy conscious way. So uh, you're, for instance, able to uh, identify yourself as uh, uh, by name. That's also possible, but not necessarily. This also speaks a little bit to the threats that were presented in the earlier uh, uh, presentation. Uh, you could also identify yourself as a profession uh, or identify yourself as an inhabitant of a particular uh, city or somebody of a particular age group. Um, and these uh, uh, attributes are registered at a, a central authority and there they can be uh, verified when you uh, use this technology to uh, add a signature to something that you want to share uh, as a media expression. 
Um, so this was already existing technology that we used in this project uh, to add uh, digital signatures to uh, online media expressions. Um, and with this proof of concept, we wanted to um, uh, enable a process where uh, a publisher or a creator or writer uh, could confirm uh, an attribute uh, with an external authority. Uh, this could be, for instance, I'm web editor of a particular public uh, broadcast organization. Um, they could then sign a media expression with this attribute. Uh, so for instance, uh, the web editor of a public uh, broadcast organization would work in their content management system and they could use this technology to uh, uh, add uh, a signature to an article that they are writing in this uh, content management system. And then uh, uh, with this integration, they could publish that uh, and then the public could uh, uh, see that the signature is present in the online publication and they could verify this signature with a browser plugin uh, that we'll demonstrate a little bit uh, further in uh, the presentation. So uh, I'm now gonna ask Martin to present the two cases that we explored in this project. Don't trip. Um, so there are two cases that we wanna present and then with some reflections on, on this. Uh, by the way, my name is Martin Zijnstra, that's Martin Brinkerink if you wanna um, avoid confusion in the, in the media. Um, the workflow diagram, uh, um, how this now works. So Mark explained this in, in bullet points, but now in a, in a diagram. So uh, for example, we have journalist Alice in the top, top left. Um, she registers at an external authority. She says, I am a, a journalist. And the external authority says, yes, you are a journalist. Then she gets a, um, uh, a, uh, a, a proof of that, which she stores locally. Uh, which you can use as a, uh, as a, as a signature for uh, media expressions. So then to use her local, uh, her, her local certificate, that's the word, certificate to sign a particular media expression. And the certificate only says, this is a verified journalist. So Alice can be remain anonymous um, and you trust the external authority to verify that indeed Alice was a journalist on the at the moment that she required the, um, the uh, certificate. So then uh, the signed expression is published to the web and the general public can use a, um, a public uh, key infrastructure, which is an infrastructure where you can share these, uh, these, these um, certificates uh, with the uh, expression itself. And then see, they can indeed infer that Alice was a journalist at the time of uh, the signature and also when it was signed, et cetera. Um, so and then there's two use cases that we uh, explored in this, in this project. Uh, one is uh, signing web uh, publications by broadcasters. So a public broadcaster wants to um, give an indication that they are indeed the author of the piece and um, they don't need it's written by a journalist or by their broadcaster employee themselves. Uh, so uh, they provide that with this signature, with this certificate, um, so the media um, consumer can research that and vouch indeed that this has been written by that person, verified by that external authority. Um, but also they could take uh, media from third parties with the same signature. So if you have a uh, journalist in, an, in a conflict region, um, we don't want to know their names because that's a security risk. Uh, we can have them uh, get a certificate identifying them as indeed a journalist um, and have their own media publication signed with that and that can be communicated onwards. So you can also up, upstream can get um, these media signed. So, uh, and, and the last point, yeah, so you can uh, protect the identity of the person while still verifying that it's indeed a journalist. So that, that would work something like this. Um, you would sign your, um, your content with an app, the IRMA app. So we use existing infrastructure for this, um, where you just have to use your own certificate on your app, uh, use QR, this, uh, this QR code, and then um, it uh, provides you with a, um, with a signature, uh, a cryptographic signature, so a, a string of uh, letters and, and numbers. 
So and then the second use case is then when you are a media consumer. Um, so you find, find this material on, uh, on a web page and you want to see if that is indeed um, uh, signed by a uh, recognized uh, person. Um, so it's published um, and then you want to know it hasn't been changed. Um, and you want to also maybe distribute it further. So um, we developed a, a, a basic standard. It's a very ad hoc standard for this. Um, and that can all be found in our documentation. Um, and that looks a bit like this. And we may also developed a, a plugin for Firefox. Uh, later on, you can have a link to the test the jar yourself. So you go to, this, uh, to a web page that has uh, proof of provenance content on it. And you can see, uh, in this case, there are seven uh, signatures on the, on the page. Uh, so, and you click on it, and if you click on it, you see the next page, uh, and then in this case, uh, we can see that the publisher actually changed three parts of the, um, the media expression, the title, the image, and part of the body, whereas some other parts, like the author and the abstract, were not changed. Uh, and then you can see, so, uh, which is valid and which is invalid, uh, and also why it is invalid, um, which is a good way to verify the... Um, the provenance of material and see if it's unchanged. Um, and then, you, of course, you can also use that to make a copy of the work, including the signatures, and republish it somewhere else. So you can also verify that uh, what you have taken from a uh, public broadcaster is indeed by that public broadcaster, and you haven't changed it yourself. So if you want to try this yourself, uh, this is a tiny URL. Um, for uh, the demo page that we have, uh, and the source code can be found at the GitLab of uh, Waag Society. Yeah, and for the for the people at home, the demo page is in Dutch, uh, but uh, you can use Google Translate. All right. Um, then some reflections. So we did two uh, two reflective reports on this. Um, uh, this one was made by me. I did a SWOT and gap analysis, also to be found on our website. So you can find find it there. Um, and our main outcomes here, so we, demoed, we demonstrated how it works, um, but currently it only works on um, static media, so uh, only for text and images at the moment, and not for uh, video or any other interactive media, which, um, which is something that we want to explore further in the future. Um, and also the metadata on this is now stored on the web page itself. Uh, and this is a risk uh, because if you remove the signature, then you have an unsigned uh, uh, media expression. And uh, most of the things that we found on the internet are unsigned. So then uh, it, it, it flows back to a normal trust situation. Um, and of course, there are similar initiatives. So there's also some competition between those initiatives. Uh, there should be only one standard as the previous uh, um, presenter also indicated. Uh, because if you only have one standard, then everyone uses the same thing, uh, and it's easier for uh, your user experience. Um, and to improve the user experience, we're also thinking about adding um, the initial publication platform as part of the signature, as part of the um, certificate. Uh, so you can also see where the material has, has come from, if, even if it has been copied and used somewhere else. Um, and as we said before, um, most of the things on the internet are unsigned by our tools. I think almost all, except maybe two pages. Um, but you can, we should be able to dis distinguish between those uh, objects that are signed and unsigned. And we can see it now um, in, in, our, in our demonstration here, but that could be better. Uh, so that's uh, the reflections that we did from this report. And there was a second report on the use case for, for uh, web archiving, and I'll let the other Martin uh, introduce that. Thank you, Martin. Uh, so this was my uh, main role in the project, actually, uh, to think about what this uh, proof of concept actually means for archives, uh, because that's where I work. I don't work at a media uh, organization. So uh, I looked at this project to see uh, how does this trendla translate to the practice of, uh, uh, of an audiovisual archive in my case, but I collaborated with uh, the KB National Library of the Netherlands uh, on uh, uh, this report. Um, 
And we identified that there are actually two uh, uh, important values uh, that can be taken from initiatives like this for archives. Uh, one, uh, we saw this as uh, a great way to uh, uh, actually validate provenance information uh, for content that we archive from the web, uh, which is uh, something that uh, 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 we are doing uh, increasingly uh, in the Netherlands, um, based on these uh, attributes that the proof uh, provenance technology uh, allows to be embedded in the page. Um, and thinking about it a little bit more, uh, we could even see us also using this to self-sign uh, um, the crawls that we take from the internet. Um, uh, also because uh, next to the signature, it also adds uh, a hash uh, uh, that allows you to verify if content has been changed uh, from the time that you've uh, crawled uh, the content. Um, but uh, looking at the current web archiving tool sets that we are uh, using in practice, uh, there are some important gaps that uh, don't currently allow us to wreak uh, these values uh, um, um, uh, uh, in, in our daily uh, practice. Um, we would need to add uh, mechanisms to detect and validate these uh, uh, embedded pieces of code, uh, these digital signatures in the HTML uh, pages, uh, which is currently lacking uh, from popular web crawlers that uh, we are using to create our web archives. Um, and it's also, we feel, very important to then be able to meaningfully represent what uh, it means that such a, a piece of uh, verifiable uh, provenance information is attached to a web page that has been archived. Um, uh, it's also something that we didn't mention in this presentation, but uh, we did a few workshops uh, um, with uh, journalists and uh, 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 um, media creators, um, and you often see people conflate the idea of provenance with the idea of trustworthiness of the actual content that has been signed. Um, and in order to really represent these web archives, we need to distinguish uh, uh, which level of validation we are giving to the content. We are not telling that the content is correct. We are telling that the content uh, verifiably came from a certain uh, signee. And that distinction also needs to be reflected in tools like the Wayback Machine when we would use this uh, in our web archiving uh, procedures. And with that, I think we uh, see if we still have a bit of time for questions. But I'll leave that up to the moderator. Okay. Thank you so much. That was really interesting. Um, I wonder if we have questions in the audience. We do, right away. Hi, I'm Ludo. Um, imagine I'm like a lawyer and I'm this barred from practicing, but I'm still signed. How long does the certificate last? If I'm like a doctor and I start selling snake oil, but I'm still signing uh, medical documents or something, it wouldn't, I mean, how long does it last and how do you prevent abuse uh, or identity theft, I guess, or something like that? With the, um, uh, the expiration of the certificates, I'm not sure how it currently works with the technology. Do you know, Marta? Yeah, the authority decides, but I don't know if they set I don't know what they've set uh, as an expiration date in this uh, uh, particular uh, um, proof of concept. So the, the authority decides the, uh, the expiration date of the certificate. Uh, and that depends. So you, uh, for example, in the Netherlands, there's an authority that verifies your email address, right? That's the, our, um, our IP, uh, our domain provider, SCDN. Uh, so you, then you verify your email address. And that, I think that's a year. Um, you can also verify you as a person at the municipality of Eindhoven. Nijmegen? Eindhoven? Eindhoven. Eindhoven. Um, and that is, uh, uh, that, that's also a year, I think. So if you have a different authority for like being a doctor or 
maybe uh, being a, a, practi a law practitioner, then that could be like half a year, 10 days, or maybe even a day, right? Okay, but now imagine I did something bad. How long does it take for my identity become, to become invalid? And yeah, so the certificate is, is given to you by the authority, and that cannot be subtracted because it's a, um, it's a certificate that is uh, locally for you, or is, is it? Hold on a second. So, so, so there's a certificate has an expiry date, and we like to make them as far in the future as possible because we don't want to reissue them. Um, but we have a certificate revocation list, which we make as short as possible so that it's as short as, uh, as possible. And we can add people to the revocation list. Although functionally, CRLs are almost complete crap in the world. So the answer is we have a really big problem when it comes to certifying people and getting their um, permission to be a doctor revoked while actually not revoking their permission to exist as a person, <laughs> right? So this is a big problem, and I'm, I'm really enthusiastic that you're doing this because I think it's really going to bring this into, you know, the public. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the clarification. Is it still on? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Did it answer the question? I think Do we so. have any more questions in the room at the moment? No, I think that's it. Anything online? No, that's brilliant. Thank you ever so much. It's really